Building Metasploitable 3, this time on Metasploit Minute. Metasploit Minute is brought to you by viewers like you. If you get value from the show and can spare just a dollar, please consider contributing at metasploitminute.com. Hello and welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. Today we're going to be talking about Metasploitable 3. Not two, not Metasploitable Minute, not every other blooper that I've got done before this right now, but today we're going to be talking about Metasploitable 3. So Metasploitable 3 is a virtual machine, just like Metasploitable 2 was, that you can host that is vulnerable to all kinds of things. They've built this in a great way that you can try out different exploits that are built into Metasploit and test your skills or just see what the output is. Now, Metasploitable 2 was built on Linux, and there was a lot of great uh, learning material on Linux, um, a lot of great vulnerabilities they put in for that on Linux, but they're really outdated and um, not too much that you, can, that you can do to add more things to it automatically. So what uh, Rapid7 decided to do was make a buildable version that you can get from GitHub and add more vulnerabilities as time goes on and have it be built for you or built by you later on. So it's a really great setup that can grow as time grows on or, or they can add more vulnerabilities to later on down the road without having to build a new VM, export it and throw it on SourceForge because everyone trusts what's on SourceForge. So to get into this, we actually have to pull down a, a rep repository or github.com forward slash rapid7 forward slash metasploitl3 and if you've never used Git before, you just click on the little button that says clone or download, copy this off, do git clone, paste that in, and it starts pulling down the repo. Now we've already done that, so we're gonna cancel that and type correctly and go into Metasploitable 3. Now to build this, you actually have to have some, some basic uh, requirements. Now, they're kind of steep. So if we go back over here and go down into the readme, you have to have an OS compatible with the following things. VX or VTX or v AMDV, which is basically virtualization. Um, almost every modern day piece of hardware has this or laptop, desktop, whatever. You have to have 65 gigs of available space on the drive. I've actually done this without 65 gigs with 40 or Actually, I think I did it with 30 sometime. So I don't know where this requirement comes from, but it's, um, it just, it's a safe number. Now the 4.5 gigs of RAM, that's actually something you need because when it builds it, it's actually uh, putting the virtual machine into a four gig of RAM uh, setup. So the VM itself needs four gigs because it's running all of this vulnerable software and it's Windows, and Windows is a memory hog. So when we go into this, we have to have all of these set up first. Now the next thing is the software requirements. The software requirements are Packer, Vagrant, the Vagrant Reload plugin, VirtualBox, and an internet connection. Now if you get cloned this, you probably have an internet connection. So the next things we have to work on is Packer, Vagrant, and Vagrant Reload. To get Vagrant, all you do is go to vagrantup.com, download this repository. Now, there's a little caveat here because if you go to um, the repository for whatever repo, or I'm sorry, for whatever operating system you're running, there might be a version of Vagrant that's already there. But because this is a rolling uh, repository and they add features and change features from Vagrant all the time, there's a minimum version that you need and most of the times you will not have the right version or the most up-to-date version if you're talking about a repo that your operating system provides. So to look at that, if we go into here and we go into, uh, I think there's a requirements file somewhere in here, into the build.sh, so we're going to be talking about that later. You can see the actual version numbers of the things that you're going to need. So if you don't have those specific versions, you're going to have to get them from uh, vagrantup.com or Packer. So Packer.io is the next is the next requirement that you have, and it's really easy to download. 
Since it's a statically assigned or statically linked uh, binary, you just download it and throw it in user bin or somewhere, and it's really easy to put it on. It's just a download zip file that you take the binary and throw it where it needs to be. Now, real quick caveat. Building Metasploitable 3 is not always perfect. <laughs> uh, I tried building it on Windows once, uh, and I threw, uh, because Packers supported on Windows, uh, Linux, Solaris, OS X, all of these different versions, so is Vagrant, so is VirtualBox, um, even, even Metasploitable 3 supports it, it wasn't perfect. <laughs> Let's just go with perfect. It wasn't perfect. So I recommend putting it on OS X or Linux, honestly. Uh, these are where it's built most easily. It does everything for you. And you have this amazing little thing that you can uh, call ARIA2C and download the ISO directly. Now we're going to get right into that. So when I, ha when I go to Metasploitable 3's repo and I have all of the requirements set there, I can simply type in build Win2008. Now I'm going to stop it as it's getting close to here and try it and stop it. There we go. Because this download, the way that it does this download is really slow. <laughs> so we're going to show you a little trick, a little caveat in this Metasploit Minute to talk about ARIA 2C or ARIA. Um, in ARIA, once you download ARIA 2, you, it supports WGET or um, HTTP, it supports magnet files, torrent files, and all these things. And it's multi-threaded and goes as fast as humanly possible. So when I hit enter, oops, there, because I can't type, or I hit, as I hit enter, you'll see that it says, I have one minute until this thing is done. Now, we tried this on the, the same internet connection, and it was taking like 10 minutes. So I recommend doing this instead. Now, once that's downloaded, you can actually go into the Metasploitable 3 directory under ISO and put that file in there. We've already done that, and that makes this whole process go faster. The Metasploitable 3 build actually takes close to an hour or two hours to finish. Uh, it is doing all kinds of things from installing Chocolatey on Windows um, and then the installations of different large things like Glassfish, Tomcat, Java, all kinds of metas uh, vulnerable uh, software. And we're going to be going into that and exploiting a lot of those things in, in the next episodes. But in this one, I just wanted to show you how to build it, some caveats, some of the things that were important for me when I was learning how to put this thing together. Oh, and I totally forgot one extra thing. This builds, and especially when you're a trainer, so I teach a class at Black Hat, and I thought, hey, I'm going to give Metasploitable 3 to everyone. I threw it out there as, a, as an OVF file, because that's what it ends up as. And Everyone tried it, and everyone who had uh, VMware was like, this is not working, it's not starting, it's not doing anything. Come to find out, the OVF file is very, in Windows-based OVFs, it's very uh, centric on what's built for. So the VirtualBox build only worked in VirtualBox. Then with, um, with Metasploitable 3, you actually have the ability to specify and manually build a different provider down here in the readme, it says VMware ISO. So to, oops, to build that is the only way you're going to be able to build it for uh, VMware, ESX, or anything like that. So that's all we have for today. Once you have the OVF file, it's pretty simple to start it up or throw it in uh, VirtualBox anywhere you wish. So let me know how, what you think. Email me at msf at hack5.org and stay tuned to metasploitminute.com for more shows like these. Huge thanks to everyone for supporting the show. And if you'd like to directly support the show, go to patreon.com forward slash movix. Every dollar goes towards making more shows like these just for you. I'm very grateful for all the support. So until next time, I'm Mubix and I'll be hacking till the Kyles come home.